Hi guys, it's Max here, back with another video. The topic of this video is going to be binary, so CS Fundamentals 2 binary. We're going to talk about three things today. Number one is, what is binary? Number two is, how does binary work? And the third is, how can we convert between binary and deanery? So let's just briefly talk about the difference between binary and deanery. So CS Fundamentals 2 binary, what is binary? So we can see here, binary is just a number system, okay? And it is a number system which uses zero and one as the digits, very straightforward. What is deanery then? Why did I say deanery earlier? Deanery is the number system which uses zero through nine. This is the number system we're all familiar with. So we've got 10 digits on our hand. We've got zero through nine for a total of 10 different digits so when we when we think of a number like 135 2014 these are written in the number system known as deanery and if we wrote a number like this that's binary so straightforward right so binary is used in computers as digital circuits use on off states these on off states correspond to the zero and one of binary we will touch more on this later, that's all you need to understand for now. So a binary number is made up of ones and zeros. A single one or a zero is what we call a bit, one bit. A, the word bit comes from binary digit. The I and the T and the B. But when we talk about binary numbers, we don't normally talk about a single bit, although we can, but we normally group them together in something called a byte. You can see here, a byte is eight bits pushed together so that we can represent more. So when you get a thousand bytes, you got yourself a kilobyte. Just like when you've got a thousand grams, you've got yourself a kilogram. And you obviously get megabytes, gigabytes, etc. One thing to note is that it's not actually a thousand, that's only approximation, an approximation, sorry, it is actually a thousand and twenty-four not a thousand. We'll touch on why this is so in just a minute. So you might be wondering, well, if binary is just numbers, then how come we can look at videos, we can look at pictures, we can listen to music? I'll tell you why. It's through a, a very smart process called encoding, right? Encoding is, the, is so important. It is how we represent different types of information just using binary, just using numbers. And binary is just a number system, okay? So here's some different encoding systems. You've got ASCII. This is a character encoding system. You've probably heard of it. RGB. This is the encoding system that computer screens, phone screens use to represent pixels in different colors. So let's just talk about these two quickly. So ASCII is what we call a character encoding scheme. So what it is, is a map from a character to a number. So A, that's a character. It will have a corresponding number. I don't know what it is in ASCII, but so just say for this example, it's 50. So if we represent the number 50 as a binary number and we use the ASCII character map, we can encode that as the A character. We encode the A character as the number 50. And we have things like spaces and other characters like at, and these will all have their own number. And then by combining these characters, we can create basically lengths of text that are encoded as a set of numbers which are represented in binary. Pretty straightforward if you ask me. So let's talk about the RGB model quickly. So the RGB model is how basically your computer screen works. So I think everyone knows what a pixel is. It's a point on the screen. What everyone doesn't know is that a pixel is actually made up of three sub pixels. Each one corresponding to red, green, or blue. These are channels in the RGB color model. And what this means is that we can vary the intensity of either red, green, or blue, and combine these together, which is what our brain will do, to create any color. So if the RGB, uh, uh, the R, the G, and the B are all maxed out, then we get white. So your screen will be white, and it, oh, sorry, and if they're all completely zeroed, then you get black. So that's how um, the RGB model works. So 
just them two things give you basically an idea of what encoding is and how we can use that combined with binary to represent different types of information within a computer. So how does binary work? It's really straightforward. Here we've got binary, here we've got denary. These are the different numbers that we can, uh, different digits that we can use in binary, zero and one. And we've got zero through to nine here for denary. So there's 10 in total, different digits for denary, two different digits for binary. We call this number the base or sometimes the radix of a number system. So how is the base and the radix of a number system relevant to the representation of the numbers within that system? The easiest way to explain this is just throwing it back to reception when you learn your place columns, place values, whatever they called it. Let's just do an example here. Two, say you've got the number 295. What does this number mean to you? How do you draw value from this number? You know instinctively it means 295. But how you learnt it was, you looked at each column. What does each column mean? Well, this is your ones column, isn't it? This is your tens column, and this is your hundreds column. So you get two times 100, nine times 10, five times one. And you add them, and that is the total quantity of 295. That is as simple as that. But how do we, how do these numbers here, our place values, tie in with the base of the number system? You might have guessed it. We do the base of the number system raised by the index of the column. And when we say index in computer science, we mean position. So this index here will be zero. It's the zeroth column. This will be one. This will be two. So if we go down here, we can work these out. We've got 10, which is our base, to the index, zero, that's one. Then here, 10 to the one, 10. 10 to the two, 100. 10 to the three, 1,000. We can apply this understanding of how we work out the place values for the base 10 number system to binary to just instantly understand how binary works. Again, two to the zero, that's gonna be one. Two to the one, two. Two to the two, four. Two to the three, eight. So in binary, instead of having ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, etc., you have ones, twos, fours, eights, sixteens, thirty twos, and so on. So let's just cement our understanding with a fully worked example. So here we've got 135. How do we do this in denary? Come on, we all know this now. It's five times one, three times 100, uh, 10, sorry, add one times 100, 135. You do the exact same process in binary. The interesting thing with binary is the digits can only be zero or one. So if it's a one, you just take the column heading, and if it's a zero, you just leave it. So we've got a column heading ones, twos, fours, eights, and so on. So we look here. Okay, we have a one, we have a two, we have a four, we have 128. Add these together, you get 135. So 135 is equivalent to the binary 10000111. Piece of cake, right? So if it's such a piece of cake, why do we why do we use binary in computers instead of deanery? Deanery is the thing that everyone understands. It's, the reason is for that, by the way, is because we've got 10 digits on our hands, right? So why do we use binary instead? So each digit in a binary number is one or zero. This is the key. There's only two different states. So it's simple. If you look at the blog post or some of the other blog posts that I've done or videos or you know what a transistor is, you know it's a switch in a digital circuit which can be on an, in an on or an off state here. These two things correspond, okay? All we need to know is whether the electrical signal is on or off in a digital circuit. So let's look at these signals here. Here we can see we've got an on state, an on state, an on state, and an on state. If something happens to the signal, so this is so this is plus voltage, and this is zero. 
if the voltage isn't all the way up, like here, or the signal's corrupted somehow, we still know that this is a one. Same here, right? Because there's only two states, one or zero. These are the only two states. This is, this is the only difference that we need to be able to determine in the voltages. If you wanted to do the same system in a digital circuit, but with binary, uh, not binary, sorry, denary, you'd have to go zero, one, two, three, four, dot, 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 and imagine the signal. It would be something like that, it would go back down, and two, three, four. As soon as you get a bit of corruption, then you're changing the value of that particular part of the signal. If you change the number, nothing's gonna work. So basically it's a no-go, you can't do it. This is the way to do it, binary, because it removes ambiguity, right? It's simple. So the key takeaway is, the reason that we use binary is because it reduces ambiguity when we design electrical circuits, digital circuits. It makes it so that any corruption in the signal can basically be ignored because it's either on or off, right? There's only two states, there's not zero, one, two, three, four. We haven't got to differentiate between so many different levels of voltage within the circuit. So I hope that sums up why we use it. It's because it's simple, it's unambiguous. Occam's razor. So let's just go through quickly two methods of converting from a denary number to a binary number just so that you fully understand how binary is working. This is called the divide by two method and it's real easy you start off with your denary number here 96 and you just keep dividing by two working out what the remainder is until you've finished and then you just take the rem you reverse the remainder so here we've got 96 divided by 2 48 remainder 0 48 divided by 2 24 remainder 0 24 divided by 2 12 remainder 0 and so on 6 remainder 0 3 remainder 0 1 remainder 1 0 remainder 1 then you just collect up the remainders and reverse them to give you this number right one one the rest zeros we can check the column headings here 64 out of 32 96 so right that conversion worked fine another method you can do i call it place value so place value this is because you're just looking at the place values as you work your way along so we start off with our number 100 and we look at the place value and we look for the largest one that we can subtract from this number and then carry on can't do 128 it's too big okay 64 though we can do so we write a 1 and we do 100 minus 64 this gives us 36 we look at the next place value 32 okay yep yeah, we can do that write another 1 36 minus 32 equals 4 then we move along again we can't do 16 we can't do 8 4 well that's exactly equal to what we've got left so 4 minus 4 equals 0 write another 1 we're on 0 now so everything else is 0 Collapse this down, you get this number here, 01100100 equals 100, right? And that's your conversion. So what, you, what you've just got to understand is binary is a number system, you convert in between, and everything that we represent in a computer, we're representing through an encoding. And also that the reason we use binary is because it makes digital circuit design so, so, so easy, specifically through the use of transistors. So hopefully this video has been useful to you and broadened your horizons in terms of how computers work. Stick around for the next video if you want to learn something about Boolean algebra and logic gates. And if you fancy it, let me know what you think of the video in the comments below. Cheers.